President Lockman, distinguished members of the Champlain College faculty, honored guest, and all you stunning master's degree candidates. First and foremost, congratulations. All those late nights and long weekends have paid off, and you are all sitting here awaiting your hoods and beaming with pride. In just a little bit, you'll be eating cake and demanding all your friends and loved ones call you master. Go ahead. You've earned it. There were so many things that I took away from my time at Champlain. The courses I took were rich, the content engaging, and the influence it had on my career was palpable. But some of the things I learned I had never anticipated when I started my journey. There were unexpected nuggets that surprised and even shocked me. So I thought I would share them with you today. Who knows, maybe they'll resonate with you as well. 13 things that I learned from graduate school that were never on a syllabus. One, the old school tricks of changing your font size and your margins on a paper like I used to do in undergrad, they don't work. Master's degree professors are hips to those tricks, so don't even try it. Two, someone actually expects you to pay student loans back with like actual money and kind of immediately. Three, there is no quantity of coffee that, when consumed, will make a person spontaneously combust. See, I took it intravenously throughout my days of working a full-time job, a part-time job, raising a child, and pursuing my master's. Depending on the class size at Champlain next year, I'm considering buying stock in Starbucks. Four, only masochists love APA citation. It's like the Rubik's Cube of writing a paper. There are no sources in the history of the world that can actually be perfectly cited using APA. Just put some periods in between things and say that it was published in New York and you're gonna be fine. <laughs> Number five, it could be quite therapeutic to yell colorful language at my computer when Canvas was not working properly or when participating in the scavenger hunt that was finding an uploaded document in there. I'm pretty sure Robin never put them on there and she and Laurel just laughed secretly to themselves. <laughs> Six, the semicolon was created solely for the, pur for the purpose of people seeking advanced degrees. I mean, come on, when do you ever see a semicolon in the real world? Never. Why? Because it's the most pretentious of punctuation. When I would use it in an essay, my professor would highlight it and write, yes! When I used it on Facebook, three people unfriended me, and it was, it was quite devastating. Seven, rewarding yourself with M&Ms for every page written throughout your coursework is delicious and not recommended by medical professionals. <laughs> at some, eight, at some point during the whole degree earning process, you will realize with shocking clarity that your relationship with grad school has become codependent and unhealthy. <laughs> You'll find that grad school is setting un unrealistic expectations of you and refuses to listen to reason. It wants your attention around the clock, and yet it can't be bothered to send you flowers or remember your birthday. Sure, it'll promise a vacation, but that doesn't mean Cabo with a margarita. Oh no, all that really means is that you won't have an assignment due, but your professors will let you know all the readings that are coming up in the next week. It's perfect and manipulative. Number nine, <clears throat> I do in fact love academic rigor and educated discourse. I came to pursuing my degree in my 30s and I anticipated much of the time it would feel laborious and it would be disconnected to the learning and I would be disconnected to the learning at hand. The opposite was true. Most days I relished the chance to discuss my profession with people who were as deeply invested in it as I was. 10. Champlain College has some of the most educated and invested, invested professors working there. Not only were they well read on the very subjects they were teaching about, but they were also directly involved in the profession I worked in. Their ability to speak about their own experiences and learning only enriched our experiences as learners and helped to illustrate that teaching requires a similar vulnerability and openness as learning does.
11. I learned that all education should be driven by the learner and supported through masterful guidance of the professor. While the content of what I was exposed to at Champlain rested on the choices of the faculty, their trust in their students allowed me to pursue what I want, how I want it, and that created for a very rich learning experience. 12. That my grad school experience would something I would miss very much. Okay, well, not instantly. I remember my first weekend as a free woman. It was great. I realized my husband hadn't left me, my daughter had magically turned four, and I was pregnant. <laughs> Imagine my surprise. I relished our time as a family again and felt proud of all that I had accomplished. Then six months later, I realized that my time at Champlain had been in profoundly impactful on me. I referenced my textbooks when setting up my new classroom and called friends from the program to discuss meeting a student's need or building curriculum. Champlain College became more than a place to earn a degree. It became a guidepost for me and I'm in debt to the faculty and staff for creating such a place where teaching content goes hand in hand with shaping wonderfully diverse human beings. Number 13, I am capable, you are capable of greatness. Let's be honest, finishing a master's degree program and not critically injuring anyone in the process is a feat in and of itself. But beyond that, there's something in each of us, some immeasurable potential which has yet to be seen. Champlain awakened in me a sense of possibility that I had not noticed before, and also the deep yearning to have an impact. I am certain that all of us will make a mark on the people we meet, the professions we have, and the places we live. When I say we are capable of greatness, I do not mean just one moment of great. I think we are capable of constant greatness, a never-ending crescendo of awesome that ignites fires and inspires others. I cannot wait to see what we all become. In closing, I hope you know that I was telling the truth about paying the loans, and I urge you to use semicolon sparingly. And I wholeheartedly believe you are already on your way to greatness just by being here today. So congratulations, enjoy the day, and as one nerd to all of you, may the force be with you.